This episode of Synced On Air is sponsored by Pave Tool Innovators. Looking for high quality gear, tools, and equipment for your hardscaping needs? Look no further than Pave Tool Innovators, where you'll find products designed to assist with every stage of hardscaping, from transporting to compacting, restraints, and more. Their tools are the perfect solutions to save time, boost revenue, please staff and reduce physical strain for all hardscaping professionals. Visit them at pavetool.com and the, enter the code FREE-T, that's F-R-E-E-T, on your next online order to get your free t-shirt. Welcome to Synced On Air. It's Angelique Rob here, and today I have Michael Bernier from Michael Bernier Design. Yes. Hi, Michael. How are you? I'm doing very well, thanks. How are you? I'm doing well. It's been a while since we met back at the Landscape Expo in Anaheim, That's what, right. in November last year? November so, last um, year. yeah. So, landscape architect by trade, um, been in the business for quite a while, haven't you? Uh, well, I've been. I started actually, gosh, I went back to school for landscape architecture uh, in 2005. So, gosh, that's a coming on 20 years. <laughs> and I started practicing about 2008 and then started my own business in 2012. So, okay, it, it was a process. It took a while to get get things rolling because it was a mid career change. Uh, I used to be in advertising and marketing. And found it to be soulless and empty, and oh. <laughs> but, uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> but well, no, it's you know it, it actually it was very creative, uh, and it really pushed me. And the, the, the beautiful thing is, is the things that I learned from being a creative director, uh, I've been able to translate into being a really good uh, landscape architect. Um, okay, and mostly on the way of dealing with my clients, how to handle my clients, and how to handle my team. So okay. it's, uh, I mean, I've been creative my whole life. So the design part, of course, translated once I learned all the, the, and, and there was a lot to learn, you know, plants, materials, how it all comes together. But uh, there was a lot I was able to transfer over, but it was a, it was a mid-career uh, shift and it did not happen overnight. <laughs> no. Well, and so I saw, I think your degree was in graphic design. Is that what you started in? Yeah, okay. in a whole other life, a whole other century, uh, I started in graphic design. This was just to give you an idea, and I hate to I hate to throw this out there, but to give you an idea how long ago it was, this was before computers were being used. <laughs> <laughs> so it was still an art form. Actually, you know, it's funny, that's interesting because it was still an art form. I was using my hands. We were dealing with materials that, you know, it was it was physical. You had to draw, paint, design, type set, wow. the whole thing. And then computers okay. came in and obviously changed everything. And while that's been a very valuable tool to expedite and, and obviously amp up creativity, now we've got AI to deal with, uh, but that's a whole other subject. Um, but what happened was I was seeing how everything, it was so digital and it was so, uh, it, it everything was on a, you know, to this size, but well, let me put the, there, we, it was to this okay. size. It was no longer a, an art form that I was able to tangibly work with. And so uh, I had this moment where I was just like, I don't know if I want to keep doing this. I needed to do something real. But you liked it up until then. You you liked the more physical art form. Well, of... my, you know, my favorite part was uh, was uh, creating commercials, TV commercials. Okay. Because there was so many different aspects to it, and bringing so many elements in. Uh, you know, writers, uh, the technical crew, and it was a very physical act because it was happening in real time and space. Okay. And it also helped me to learn how to tell a story. And uh, but what I what I was struggling with was who I was working for. And I won't mention the global, gigantic, uh, <laughs> high fructose no corn need, syrup no need to uh, do that. company yeah. that I was working for. Uh, well, I, I was working for an agency that that was our main client. And I just I was like, I have got to put my energy and effort into something that, that I feel good about that matters to me. And I've always okay. been an environmentalist and someone who loves nature and working. The idea of taking my creative skills and working with nature just to me seemed like the perfect marriage. 
So awesome. that's how it happened. <laughs> okay. Well, good. Well, I love to hear the story of how people came into the industry um, because it is so unique. And a, a lot of people moved into the industry. Some people grew up in it, but okay. um, some people discovered along the way too. So, um, well, great. So you said 2005, you went back to school to yeah. do landscape architecture and yeah. then it took you a while to to open up your practice or to learn everything well um, yeah it did take a while uh it in yeah the in fact I, I actually started my business with a friend i met in landscape architecture school who was also in marketing and we both said hey <laughs> let's start a business together i was a creative director up in seattle and i said this is just not working so i moved back to los angeles where i'm from and uh and just said, hey, let's let's do this. And we literally jumped in with two feet and uh, we're no longer together. We parted ways pretty early, but I've been doing it on my own now for uh, 11, almost 12 years. So awesome. OK. And what do you enjoy so much about it? Uh, well, the process is is great. Uh, there's just so that that was one of the things that I love so much about. There's so many elements to it that have to come together and work. And now, instead of working with just colors and fonts and, you know, a message, I'm dealing with live plants that, you know, that that has to be addressed. This, it's, this thing's alive. So we yeah. have to deal with where that's going to go and the other materials and how everything works together. And um, so I love that part. And of course, you know, when a client sees the finished product and I can see how much it moves them physically, emotionally. Mm -hmm. That's the other thing about advertising. You know, if you're lucky, you get someone to buy something, you know, whereas now it's like I get to see how someone can now uh, use the space and there's an emotional connection. And, you know, one of my, my personal mission is to connect people back to nature. And that's the way to do it is to get people outside. And yeah. even if it's just their backyard. Right. Yeah. So yeah. and then, of course, there's nothing more satisfying than uh, putting uh, a brand new kangaroo paw on the ground and within minutes a hummingbird comes in and starts going to town on it and it's like <laughs> I'm helping nature and to me there's no, nothing better so, awesome awesome yeah. well and you've also so when I met you you had a booth at the landscape expo um, hopefully I said that right and you were also giving a talk and stuff and so this is a, a I guess another part of what you're offering now yes. So tell me a little bit more about that, because that's well, very new, isn't it? Yeah, it's very, very new. Uh, the, you know, being in the industry now for a dozen or so years, uh, I, not that I've seen everything, but I feel like I've seen everything. And you work with so many different people and contractors and clients and whatnot. And I saw a very big uh, gap between uh, how uh, contractors get their work done and how they communicate and how, uh, and I don't mean everybody, I'm talking about the majority, of course, there's always okay. exceptions and, okay. and clients and how they work and what they want and how to best deal with them. And I saw this gigantic, just like these hills here, chasm. <laughs> in between, uh, and I was always the babysitter. I was always the, the bridge, which is fine because that's okay. what, that's my job. That's what I, I earned my hard-earned few dollars for is to make sure that the I understand what the client wants and to make sure that the contractor understands that and it gets done the way it's supposed to. Um, and it's and two I, separate perspectives sometimes, isn't it? Oh, it's so. not only the two, it's like two different planets. <laughs> it's like they speak different languages. They see the world completely different. It's like Mars and Venus. And so um, I saw an opportunity, a necessity actually, to uh, to help bridge that gap. And to to introduce to contractors, look, you guys are great at what you do, you know, regardless of the trade, whether it's painting, concrete, um, you know, carpentry or planting, irrigation, you name whatever it is you do, you're very good at it. And the key is, is you have to open, take a step back and open up and see the whole project from the client's perspective. Hmm. It's the only way you're actually going to be able to. Uh, to really step up your business and make uh, make a, a, a difference. Instead of just being a tradesman that you're hired, you know, to get the work done, you can actually have an, a bigger impact on the project and and grow your business. 
and I think to do that, uh, I think understanding design mm-hmm. is the key to that because not only do you, you also, you obviously have to learn people skills, which uh, I'll just say it. Most contractors are, don't really have good people skills, just throwing it out there. Uh, again, not everybody, my experience though, for several, um, is you have to learn people skills, uh, but it, because you have to be able to express what you are trying to accomplish. And the same thing from the, the client side, if you can walk up to a client and not only understand their vision, but help them expand and create the vision. And mm-hmm. the only way to do that is to understand design. So when I sit, when I work with a client, um, I don't just go there and say, okay, tell me what you want. And I'm writing all this down. I try to understand them better and get a sense of what their vision is, even beyond what they actually want and need. Uh, mm-hmm. Cause that's what they're looking at. Well, I want this and I want this and I need this and I've got this much to spend. My job yeah. is actually to say, well, how about this? Have you thought about that? Have you, um, and uh, it's normally, I, I, I have this different background down here, but normally I have a background of my, one of my favorite projects that I took the simple request of, hey, uh, I've got grass between my house and my pool and some stepping stones, and I want something to go in between there. And I want, <laughs> I, and I want my dog to stop tracking mud into the house. That was the, that okay, was the, that was the remit. That yeah, was, yeah. Yeah. That was the scope. Well, I took what was maybe a fifteen to twenty thousand dollar spruce up uh, and turned it into a like eighty five or ninety thousand dollar outdoor living room and kitchen. Wow! Okay, because I was able to show him upsell. What was possible. Yeah. yeah, I mean, ultimately, it's upselling, but you can't upsell unless you can make an emotional connection yeah. with the clients. So, uh, what I did is I and what you saw at the uh, at the show was I was la- I launched a course called uh, The Basics of Landscape Design for Professionals. So you can not only uh, learn design and how to use it in, in landscape projects, which obviously ups, you know, it, it increases your value and your billability. I mean, you can bill for that, uh, but you, you, you easily can grow the, the scope of the project from there. Mm-hmm. And in the course, I also teach some very basic people skills, like how to present yourself better, how to listen to the client better, how to create a presentation that sells. Um, okay. it's, it's all about presentation. It's all about, yeah. hey, here's here's this incredible vision. What do you think? Oh my God, we love it. Let's do it. Yeah. You know, I just did yeah. it. I just started a new project this week where I did that. So what did um took what they wanted and turned it into something much more? Is that what you mean? Well, in this particular case, uh they're they're, they're they were the perfect clients. They knew what they wanted. And they trusted me. <laughs> okay, those are, the, those are the best clients. So, but but then, you know, I'm glad I said that because the key ingredient, you're you know, we, uh, when you're in the business of, of being a contractor or a designer for that matter, or even someone who sells a product, let's say you're selling fire pits or yeah. whatever, the the client has an idea what they want, and but they could they could call anybody. Look, I need this wall built, and they and you know, there's thousands of masons out there who can do the job. They're going to hire the person that they trust and that they like and they want to work with. So the more that you can present yourself as that person who is likable, understandable, and gets them, uh, you're establishing trust. Because ultimately, you're in the business of trust, not building brick walls. Um, The more that your client trusts you, the more that you're going to be able to uh, just increase your business. Well, and I think, yeah, something that you said made me think of not only um, trust, but to build that trust, you have to actually listen to them, understand what they say, and translate that into something that's a vision. And so that's, you know, what's funny, just a little story about my experience is the reason I became a landscape designer is because I wanted somebody to do my back garden (laughs) <laughs> and they pissed me off. <laughs> and they said, you don't want that. You want this. And I was like, no. <laughs> well, so, I'm so glad you mentioned that because, <laughs> you know, to be a really good designer and ultimately the builder, um, you don't want to just take it and be an order taker. Like the client, want, I want, you know, privacy screens here. I want a fire pit over here. 
Right. And that's why understanding design is so important because what you're going to say, what you, you can look at the list of what they want. And then you take your expertise and say, okay, I understand what you want. And let me show you how that's going to work better for you. You yes. have to be able to tell them what, cause you're the pro, right? Yeah. So, yeah. um, and that's what, uh, that, that's, that's what I teach in the course. And that's what I do every day with, a, with a, my client. Oh, to, so to answer your question about this recent project, um, what, what it really is more about is understanding what they want and they, what they need. Like, what is, what are you going to use this space for? Start there. Yeah. Get it's, it's called empathy. Like I want to feel and understand what your lifestyle is like. How many people live here? Do you have kids? Do you want to entertain dogs? You know, you name it, everything mm-hmm. fits into that equation. And then you take that information and you say, okay, given what I understand about what you want, Here's what I think is going to be best. And yeah. then you share it. And I, I don't like to use the word sell because you're really not selling. You're basically saying, this is what I think is best. And yeah. of course, everybody's got budgets they need to work with. But I almost, there's almost never been a time where I haven't been able to, to show them more. And, and they've been open to it and signed off on it. Very rarely does someone say, no, I, this is all I've got. And this is what I'm going to sit with. And I say, okay, well, then let's working with that number. Let's make the best of it. Mm-hmm. And again, good design will show you that because most contractors, and again, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not picking on anybody. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> reflecting back what my experience has been. You're, you're, when you, when you go into a project, it's like, what can I get done? How quick can I get done? And how mm-hmm. fast can I get paid and move on to the next project? Okay. Mm-hmm. So you kind of have to let go of that mentality. I mean, you still need to do that to run your business efficiently, of course, but mm-hmm. you need to take a step back and go, what, what's possible here? Uh, how well, can we optimize this? And I think that, you know, true to why we started Synced is, you know, by connecting design, build and maintain, you end up with a a higher bar of a project Absolutely. And, and clients. And, and so I think that even if they understand the design a bit better, even you don't have to do the design to even understand it better. You know, understanding it better is like a step better. Absolutely. Than not even yeah. um, questioning it. Yeah. You can still you can still hire a designer, uh, and and you may or may not actually do the installation yourself. But understanding the process and understanding yeah. how it all works that in itself is worth. You know, mm-hmm. like I, I believe that people are going to do well. First of all, make it, let me make a distinction. The first course that I launched was for professionals. I'm okay. also developing one for do-it-yourselfers, oh, which okay. ultimately will benefit the, the industry because the more educated uh, the clients are, the, the people who do the pro- uh, have the homes, the better, the, the easier it makes our job. You know, and yeah. like, like you just said, for, for a homeowner to understand what it takes, because let, let, let's be honest, most homeowners don't think landscape, landscaping at all is, is costs what it costs. Like exactly, I, I've yeah. Never met no, I think everybody comes across that. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. so the more they understand, the more they know, the more they realize. Because, like, if you're going to build a house, of course you're going to hire an architect, right? Mm-hmm. And then they think, well, plants. Well, let's just get my gardener out here, and we'll throw some plants in the ground. It's like, no, there's so many things you have to take into uh, account, and that's why we we do what we do. It's and, true. Yeah, and, and I and, think that's what you were attracted to when you when you because you came to my booth. Yeah, yeah. And you're like, what's this? Yeah. <laughs> and we had the best conversation. And that's why I love what you're doing at Synced because um, you know, there's there's opposite ends of the of the spectrum. There's landscape contractors, there's landscape architects. But what you do is you bring it all together and you tell the story and you and you make sure that people understand it's it's all integrated. It's well, and I also think that if you um let's say, you know one person does the design, another person is building it. There's always going to be something that, okay, is this level, this level isn't exactly as we thought it would be, you know, and you have to make some changes. I've done some designs where the house builder built the garden and they changed a few decisions here or there makes the job feel so different. To totally. what it would have felt like, and it's not major changes, but it it impacted it, you know, negatively, quite badly, you know. So I, again, that's where I see, you know, the more 
um, let's say landscape architects understand construction methods and vice versa, the better we can, you know, talk through the plans, make decisions and come out with a quality product at the end. So, and so just a clarification. So at your design business, are you supervising the construction? Are you um, hiring people to build? What? Do, how does it work in your design shop? Yeah, great question. Uh, and it, to, to what you just said, it's the perfect scenario is when we as designers have control over everything. And we know that we don't have control over anything in reality. <laughs> so that's why communication is so important. Uh, I There was a time when I was managing everything, the, the construction, the landscape installation, everything. And I found that it was just uh, it was just more than I was willing to take on. And I wanted to move back into a design role. Uh, okay. And I think that was it was around that same time as when I got inspired to do the course, because I knew that there was still that gap that needed to be filled. So, oh. for example, this current project I'm working on, um, I, I, I found a contractor. or I have a pool of contractors that I work with and they're okay. building the concrete walls, uh, the fire pit. Uh, they're building the deck. And they are directly contracted with the client because that way okay. they're they're on the hook. It's their responsibility. Um, okay. That's the other thing. Accountability is something that is just massively missing in this business. And uh, my cat just walked in and is trying to get my attention. So I pardon <laughs> the house. So I'm, I'm actually on an interview here. So hang on. All right. Um, so uh, <laughs> the. Uh, uh, where was I? Uh, but what I do is that I, I also have a uh, foreman and, and landscape crews that I work that I manage directly because okay. that's something that I feel much more comfortable about. Uh, you know, just I, I, I get this. I can handle this and I can fix anything that isn't going right. Um, okay. If someone does something pouring concrete and something goes wrong, I'm, I can't fix it. So I, I want to make sure the right person's in charge. <laughs> For that yeah. so yeah uh okay. so i yeah so i still manage you know uh, most landscape installations okay. uh, and then, again it gives me control i mean any designer who's done a project knows that when they do a plan that even though that plan is a is, is really a guideline when you're on site and you're placing plants and stuff everything changes or not everything but a lot changes yeah uh, there's always adjustments so i like to i like to have hands-on for that yeah yeah, no, that makes sense. Well, good. Yeah, no, it sounds like you have a good viewpoint of, you know, the industry and working different ways because you've worked, you know, fully control and then and outsourcing some of it. So that gives you, yeah, a different perspective on how to how contractors can work with clients. And so you've just launched, I think you were just launching it last November, were you? Well, because yeah, think that's outside. What I, I, okay, I, yeah. introduced, I introduced it at the show. And yeah, okay. The talk okay. that I gave was basically a an expanded version of what you and I are talking about here. Yeah. Um, and it, I, I, the talk, the title of the talk is "Think Like a Client, Design Like a Pro," ah, because you know yes. everybody from contractors to designers can learn something from. Uh, I believe can learn something from the course. So we did our first course in the winter. Uh, with a handful of uh, of contractors, and I'm now kind of revising things and just sharpening it up before I launch the next ones. I don't have a, okay. a date yet, but I'll be launching another one. The goal is um, uh, I'm doing live right now, like a, like a Zoom call. There's a session okay. eight weeks, eight I think it's eight weeks right now, where I do weekly live sessions with videos and homework and things like that. And ultimately, once I get it nailed down and perfected. I'm going to record the whole thing and have it live online so anybody can take it anytime. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's uh, that, that's the plan. So like I said, the, for professionals, which has the, the very significant component of how to work with clients better. And then I'm doing the uh, do it yourself version where it'll be from the homeowner's perspective of, okay, this is our house. We have $10,000. What can we do with it? Yeah. And I'm going to walk them through the process of here's how you plan it out. And, only uh, ten thousand dollars. 
<laughs> I know, right? Uh, I'm dealing with that right now with a client uh, that only has ten thousand dollars, and I'm just like, gosh, I I really okay. want to help you. <laughs> I know, so, a but, but but that's the whole point is that you know we're uh, especially with we don't know what's happening with the economy. There's all kinds of talk about all kinds of things, but there's going to be more people going, okay, honey, let's go to Home Depot and do this ourselves. And we know, we all know what that looks like if they don't know what they're doing, right? And yeah. this, so this is my way of helping them uh, get a plan, you know, like create a plan and do it, at least do something right for that matter. Uh, and they can take whatever they get from the course or not get it. And and again, at the end of the day, at least they're more educated. They may go, yeah. you know what? We don't know what we're doing. Let's hire that contractor after all. But they're going to yeah. be a lot more educated and informed in doing so. And maybe so. even be able to cost it up a bit more themselves, because I think, you know, we all get that. Well, the the pavers are fifty dollars a square foot. So why are you charging me this? You know, um, because pavers are such a small part of the whole construction piece. Yeah. yeah. Right, right. So the first how did the first um, course go then? Very good. Well, I mean, it was it was the first one. So there was uh, uh -huh. learning uh, from it. Uh, a lot of bumps in the road. But, uh, you know, I, I had to I had to kind of swallow some pride and take a step back and go, OK, this we're, we're learning from this. And, yeah. uh, and I, I, you know, I learned a lot from working with these guys, too. They, they taught me a lot. I, you know, it was it was a chance for me to understand what their wants and needs are, too. And that yeah. way we can improve on the course as well, because I oh, find as good. a designer, uh, especially after, you know, starting many, many years ago in graphic design and then getting into advertising, I see things from a, a, a very, very high perspective. Like, you know, I'm looking at things that the average, even, even a really good contractor is not going to need to understand about design. So okay. it was about tweaking the language. Um, you know, because ah. I, I base everything on principles, the principles of design that can be utilized, whether you're designing a chair, a house, a car, a piece of clothing or a landscape. Okay. Okay. And I found that I need to make these a lot more specific <laughs> to where do you put that Italian Cypress, you know, uh, and where do you not put it? So th that's the thing. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I learned a lot as well. <laughs> well, you know, it takes a lot to say that too, that you have to rethink it and, and tweak things. And so yeah, it'll be even better right the second time. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No, it, it, we're in tweak mode right now. Uh, pretty, pretty significant tweak, which is why I'm waiting to release it as a recorded product. I want to get it right before. I, you know, do it that way. So awesome. Well, yeah. On on the road to quality. Good. <laughs> I'm all about quality. <laughs> That's well, why we awesome. do what we do. Yeah. Well, great. I think this has been a, a great introduction in uh, introduction to your your background and your business and also what you're going to be doing in the future. So yeah. do you want to tell us about your so your your business is called Think Outside the Course. Yeah, the the uh, I have uh, two two websites, MichaelBerniersDesign.com, which is my design business. Yeah, and then um, ThinkOutside.Design, and I, I'm even wearing the shirt. Oh, good. ThinkOutside.Design, which is the platform where uh, is the like home base for all the educational products that I'm creating. Okay, and that was we literally so the professional and that. the DIY. We'll yeah, right now, same. the only thing that's on there is for professionals. And okay. as we expand the courses, it's going to go even more. And in fact, one of the things I learned, going back to the idea of too big of a perspective versus being more specific, I'm actually going to start doing workshops that are much smaller. And they're oh. like one, one episode of an hour, hour and a half, where people can go on, they're much lower price. And uh, for like, I don't know, I haven't come up with the exact price, but for like $30, $40, they can come on and learn a specific thing. And what we're doing right now, the one we're working on at the moment, especially here in Southern California, which even though we had a lot of rain this winter, we normally don't. And we're, you know, we still have a drought situation. So I'm in the process of ripping a lawn out and replacing it with a drought tolerant garden. And so okay. that's our first workshop is how to, how to take out a lawn and replace it with a drought tolerant garden. Oh, neat. Yeah. Little bite-sized chunks of, yeah. Yeah. The design. Yeah. Little, yeah. little bite-sized. And that, that way people get to know me a little bit better. They understand the material and then they can say, yeah, I'm ready for the, the full Monty. And yeah. uh, 
can do the bigger course. But we that that was part of the process also was so how can we how can we give them little bits and pieces to to chew on while we're developing the bigger course? <laughs> oh, awesome! Yeah, awesome. Well, good luck with that, and you'll have to Thank keep you. us posted and um, yeah, show off some of your work sometime. Absolutely, I so. love that. Well, great. Well, thanks, Michael, for being on the show and stay tuned for Amy's summary of this interview in Spanish. Sí, sí. Muchas gracias. (laughs) (laughs) Saludos y gracias por sintonizando con Saints on Air. Este episodio está patricionado por Pave Tool Innovators. Está buscando equipos y herramientas de alta calidad para sus necesidades del escape duro. No busques más allá de Pave Tool Innovadores, donde encontrará productos diseñados para ayudarlo en cada etapa de la construcción del paisajismo, desde el transporte hasta la compacción, las restricciones y más. Pave Tool Herramientas es la solución perfecta para ahorrar tiempo aumentar los ingresos, complacer al personal y reducir la tensión física para todos los profesionales del escape duro. Visítelos en su sitio de web pavetool.com y use el código FREE-T en su próximo pedido en línea para obtener su camiseta gratis. Saludos, oyentes de Synced On Air. Amy aquí con el resumen de hoy de nuestro podcast para todos nuestros profesionales que hablan español. Hoy entrevistamos a Michael Bernier de Think Outside Landscape Design Academy, una experiencia de aprendizaje en línea interactiva de ocho semanas para paisajistas profesionales que buscan aprender las herramientas para aumentar constantemente El alcance y la rentabilidad está en nuestro podcast de hoy y nos brinda su viaje en la industria y lo que lo llevó a lanzar Think Outside para compartir su conocimiento y amor por el diseño de paisajes con una audiencia más amplia al ofrecer capacitación, recursos y consultas en línea. También es el fundador y diseñador principal de Michael Bernier Design en Los Ángeles, California. Muy bien, empezamos. Michael Bernier ha estado involucrado en la arquitectura paisajista durante casi 20 años, comenzando en los 2005 cuando volvieron a estudiar para ello. Comenzó a practicar en el 2008 y finalmente comenzó su propio negocio en 2012. La transición a la arquitectura paisajista fue un proceso que tomó algún tiempo ya que fue un cambio a mitad de carrera. Anteriormente trabajó en publicidad y marketing, pero le encontró insatisfactorio. A pasar de eso, reconoce los aspectos creativos de su carrera anterior que lo ayudaron en su rol actual como arquitectura paisajista, particularmente en el manejo de clientes y la gestión de su equipo. Aunque siempre ha sido creativo, aún quedaba mucho por aprender en términos de plantas, materiales y cómo todo se une en el diseño del paisaje. El cambio de carrera no fue instantáneo y recurrió esfuerzos y tiempo para lograrlo. Michael comenzó su carrera en diseño gráfico cuando las computadoras aún no se usaban mucho. Hicieron hincapié en que el diseño gráfico en ese momento era una forma de arte físico que implicaba dibujar, pintar y diseñar a mano. Sin embargo, con la llegada de las computadoras, todo cambió. Las computadoras se convirtieron en una herramienta valiosa, aumentando la eficiencia y fomentando la creatividad. Luego, la persona mencionó el surgimiento de la AI como otro desarrollo significativo en el campo. Observaron cómo la digitalización 
y la pequeña escala del trabajo digital les quitaron el aspecto tangible de su forma de arte. Como resultado, preguntaba si querían continuar en este ámbito digital y expresaron su deseo de hacer algo más real. Su aspecto favorito de esta carrera fue crear comerciales de televisión. Disfrutó el proceso de reunir varios elementos como escritores y equipo técnico para crear una experiencia física y en tiempo real. Este trabajo les ayudó a desarrollar habilidades para contar historias. Sin embargo, se sentía en conflicto por trabajar para una empresa global, as, global asociada con productos con alto contenido de fructosa y que su principal cliente era una agencia que rep se representaba a esa empresa. Su pasión por la naturaleza y ser ecologista le llevó a darse cuenta de que quería canalizar sus habilidades creativas en algo que se alineara con sus valores. Vio trabajar con la naturaleza como la combinación perfecta para sus habilidades creativas y así fue como sucedió su transición. Decidió iniciar un negocio con un amigo que conoció mientras estudiaba arquitectura paisajista quien también tenía experiencia en marketing. Insatisfecho con su trabajo como director creativo en Seattle, regresó a su ciudad natal de Los Ángeles y decidió dar el salto y comenzar su propio negocio. Aunque su sociedad con su amigo no duró mucho, han estado manejando el negocio de forma independiente durante casi 12 años. ¿Qué es lo que disfrutaba tanto Michael de su trabajo? Le encanta el proceso, una de las cosas que le produce una inmensa alegría es la cantidad de elementos diferentes que deben unirse y armonizarse. Ya no se trata solo de colores, fuentes y mensajes. Ahora se pone a trabajar con plantas vivas que requieren una cuidadosa consideración de su ubicación y cómo interactúan con otros materiales. Este aspecto realmente le fascina. Cuando un cliente ve el resultado final y es testigo del impacto físico y emocional que tiene en él, es increíblemente gratificante. A diferencia de la publicidad tradicional donde el objeto es vender algo, ahora tiene la oportunidad de crear espacios que forjen una conexión emocional y vuelven a conectar a las personas con la naturaleza. Incluso si eso solo su propio patio trasero hace la diferencia. Además, no hay nada más gratificante que plantar una pata de canguro nueva y ver a un colibri alcanz alcanzándose rápidamente y disfrutándola. Es un recordatorio de que está contribuyendo a la naturaleza y ayudando a prosperar y eso para él es la máxima recompensa. Después de haber estado en la industria durante años, durante 12 años, ha adquirido mucha experiencia. Si bien no, has, no ha visto todo, a veces se siente como si lo hubiera hecho. Al trabajar con varios contratistas, clientes y otras personas, notó una breca significante en la forma en que abordan su trabajo y se comunican entre sí. Por supuesto, hay excepciones, pero se refiere a la mayoría. Parecía haber un, una gran división, como las colonias en la distancia, entre los contratistas y sus métodos, y los clientes y sus expectativas. A menudo se encontraba desempeñado el papel de mediador, actuando como puente entre las dos partes. Esto estaba bien porque era parte de su trabajo y por lo que ganó su reputación e ingresos. Su responsabilidad era entender lo que quería el cliente y asegurarse de que los contratistas entendieran esos requisitos, asegurando en última 
instancia que el trabajo se completó según lo previsto. Ahora tocamos tema en la gran división en la industria. La gran división entre contratistas y clientes se comparó con dos planetas diferentes. Hablan diferentes idiomas y tienen perspectivas completamente diferentes. Reconociendo esta breca y la necesidad de salvarla, vio una oportunidad de marcar la diferencia. Quería ayudar a los contratistas a comprender que eran hábiles en sus oficios, ya fuera pintura, trabajos de concreto, carpintería, irrigación o cualquier otro campo. Sin embargo, creía que necesitaban dar un paso atrás y ver todo el proyecto desde la perspectiva del cliente. Este cambio de mentalidad les permitiría elevar sus negocios y tener un impacto más significativo en los proyectos. Comprender el diseño fue crucial para lograrlo. Los contratistas no solo necesitaban desarrollar habilidades interpersonales de las que muchos de ellos carecían, sino que también debían ser capaces de expresar sus ideas y comprender la visión del cliente. Cuando trabajos con clientes, no les preguntaba simplemente qué querían y tomaba notas. Se esforzó por comprenderlos verdader verdaderamente e ir más allá de sus deseos y necesidades inmediatos. Se trataba de explorar su visión y expandirlas juntos. Uno de sus proyectos favoritos ejemplifica este enfoque, comenzando con una simple solicitud para resolver el problema del lado que ingresaba a la casa desde el área de césped entre la casa y la piscina. Pudo crear una solución que superó sus expectativas iniciales. El proyecto que mencionó anteriormente comenzó como una simple remodelación con un valor de alrededor de 15 a 20 mil. Sin embargo, a través de una comunicación efectiva y la comprensión de los deseos del cliente, pudo transformarlo a una sala de estar y una cocina al aire libre valoradas en alrededor de 85 a 90 mil dólares. Esto sirvió como testimonio del poder de hacer una conexión emocional con los clientes y mostrar lo que era posible. La venta adicional se convirtió en un resultado natural de establecer tales contextos. Para apoyar a los profesionales en este esfuerzo, lanzó un curso llamado Los Fundamentos del Diseño del Paisaje para Profesionales. Los participantes en este curso aprendieron no solo sobre los principales de diseño y cómo incorporarlos en los proyectos de paisajismo, sino también sobre cómo aumentar su valor y potencia de construcción. Además, enseñó habilidades fundamentales para las personas, incluida la mejora de la autopresentación, la escucha activa y la creación de presentaciones persuasivas. La clave fue presentar una visión increíble que resonará con el cliente, lo que finalmente condujo a aprobaciones entusiastas y nuevos proyectos. Recientemente comenzó un nuevo proyecto en el que aplicó estas técnicas y conquistó con éxito al cliente con la visión presentada. En este caso particular, tuvo la suerte de tener los clientes perfectos. Tenía una visión clara de lo que querían y depositaron su confianza en él, creando una relación ideal con el cliente. Sin embargo, era importante tener en cuenta que el ingrediente clave en cualquier negocio, ya sea que se trate de una contratista, diseñador o vendedor de un producto, era generar confianza con el cliente. Si bien puede hablar numerosos profesionales capaces de cumplir con su solicitud, los clientes optaron por trabajar con alguien en que confiaban. Les gustaba 
y con quien querían colaborar. Presentarse como una persona simpática, comprensiva y con la que se puede relacionar ayudó a construir esa confianza. En última instancia, su negocio giraba en torno a la confianza, no solo a las tareas físicas que realizaban. Cuando más confianza tuvieron los clientes en ellos, mayor sería el potencial de crecimiento y éxito empresarial. Ahora, la importancia de comprender la visión de su cliente y por qué es importante comprender el diseño. Como diseñador y constructor, se esforzó por ser más que un simple tomador de pedidos. Entendió que tener un conocimiento profundo de los principales de diseño le permitiría ir más allá de simplemente cumplir con las solicitudes del cliente. Cuando un cliente presentaba su lista de deseos, era su papel como profesional aprovechar sus experiencia y mostrarles cómo se podía mejorar y mejorar su visión. Este enfoque es enfatioso en su curso y se aplicó todos los días en sus interacciones con los clientes. Para iniciar un proyecto, se enfocó en la empatía, comprendiendo verdaderamente su estilo de vida, necesidades y preferencias. Comprender cómo planeaba utilizar el espacio fue clave. Esta empatía le permitió crear un diseño que se alineaba con sus aspiraciones. Si bien los propuestos fueron una consideración, descubrió que la mayoría de los clientes estaban abiertos a expandir su visión inicial cuando se les presentaba soluciones de diseños atractivas rara vez se limitaron al alcance original. Incluso, frente a las limitaciones presupuestas, se enforzó por optimar el proyecto y aprovechar al máximo los recursos disponibles. Creía que era importante alejarse de la mentalidad de simplemente completar las tareas rápidamente y recibir un pago. Si bien la eficiencia era esencial para las operaciones comerciales, dar un paso atrás y explorar las posibilidades de cada proyecto permitió obtener resultados óptimos y la satisfacción del cliente. También comprender el proceso y cómo funcionaba todo en el paisajismo fue invaluable, ya sea que uno contratara a un diseñador o decidiría hacer la instalación ellos mismos. Creía firmemente que la educación desempeñaba un papel crucial en el éxito tanto de los profesionales como de los propietadores de viviendas. Por eso lanzó su primer curso para profesionales y actualmente está desarrollando uno para aficionados al bricolaje. Educar a los clientes benefició a la industria en su conjunto porque un cliente informado hizo que su trabajo fuera más fácil y más satisfactorio. Muchos propietadores subestimaron el costo y la complejidad del paisajismo. A menudo pensaba que era tan simple como contratar a un jardinero y plantar algunas flores, pero en realidad había numerosos factores a considerar y decisiones a tomar. Al igual que contratar a un arquitecto para construir una casa, contratar a un paisajista aseguró que se tuvieron en cuenta todos los aspectos del proyecto. Ahí es donde entró el juego de su experiencia. Creía que eso era lo que atraía a la persona a su stand en el evento. Tuvieron una gran conversación porque entendieron la importancia de entregar todos los elementos y contar una historia cohesiva a través del paisajismo. Reunió todo y ayudó a las personas a comprender la inter interconexión y el significado de cada componente. 
la importancia de educar a los profesionales del paisaje y el, y el inicio de su academia online. Cuando diferentes personas manejan varios aspectos de un proyecto, puede haber cambios menores que impactan negativamente en el resultado final, incluso pequeñas variaciones en los métodos de construcción o en la toma de decisiones pueden afectar muchísimo el resultado. Por eso creía que era fundamental que los arquitectos paisajistas comprendieran los métodos de construcción y que los contratistas comprendieran la intención del diseño. Con una comprensión integral de ambas disciplinas, se podría lograr una comunicación efectiva y tomar decisiones informadas y la entrega de un producto de alta calidad. Presentamente, su programa presenta una versión ampliada de su conversación actual titulada Diseñando como un profesional. La charla tuvo como objetivo proporcionar información valiosa para contratistas y diseñadores por igual. El primer curso se llevó a cabo durante el invierno, atendió a un pequeño grupo de contratistas. Actualmente estaba en el proceso de revisar y refinar el material antes de lanzar el próximo curso. Si bien aún no se había estabilizado una fecha específica, planea organizar otra sesión en vivo similar a una llamada de Zoom. El próximo curso duraría ocho semanas y contará con sesiones semanales en vivo, videos, tareas y más. Una vez que profesionó el contenido, tenía la intención de grabar todos los cursos y ponerlo en disposición en línea para que cualquiera lo tomara a su conveniencia. El curso se centraría principalmente en mejorar las habilidades de los profesionales, particularmente en el trabajo efectivo con los clientes. Gracias por sintonizarte hoy. Y no olvides que puedes leer la entrevista completa en español en nuestro sitio de web. Deja una gusta, comparte y suscríbete a nuestras plataformas de Synced. Hasta la próxima semana.